Hello guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show how to take measurements on a real body and in subsequent videos, show how to use these measurements to create a basic bodies block using the drafting technique. There are many diagrams showing where to measure on a body for drafting the basic bodies. These diagrams often show reference points of measurements, which looks easy, but to determine where those reference points are on a real body can be problematic. In this tutorial, I will show how to pinpoint those reference points, then take necessary measurements needed, needed for drafting the basic bodies. If you're like me and always curious about how those reference points are derived and where exactly they are on the body, this is a perfect video for you to watch. Also, if you're a perfectionist that wants to get everything right, because sometimes the average measurement or the average standard measurement that is used for everybody doesn't fit a particular person and if you're measuring for somebody you might as well just get it right so this video is a good tutorial to help understand where those reference points are how to and how to take those measurements in my previous videos i demonstrated the draping technique i showed how to drape the basic bodies I showed how to drape the basic bodies with two darts, shoulder and waist dart, side and waist dart, basic bodies with a single waist dart, torso basic bodies. The torso basic body is the sloper that extends past the waist to the hip level. And finally, the basic skirt sloper. In this tutorial, I will show how to locate and mark all the necessary reference points on a real body and how to take accurate body measurements using those reference points as guides. The first reference point is your shoulder tip. Using your fingers, trace along your shoulder blade to the end of your shoulders. At the end of your shoulder are two tiny bones that are sticking out slightly on either side of your shoulders and those are your shoulder tip. The shoulder tip are used to measure the across shoulder length. The second reference point is the clavicle, which is located at the base of your throat. Suck in your breath for a moment and you will create a hollow at the base of your throat, known as the clavicle. The bottom of the clavicle is used to measure the center front length. The third and fourth reference points are the neck and neck at shoulder. These two reference points are intertwined. At the base of the neck, there is a crease that goes around the neck. This crease serves as a guideline to locating the neck at shoulder point that marks where the shoulder length begins. The sixth and final reference point is the nape of the back neck. With your hands placed at the bottom of the back neck, Bend your neck and you should feel a bone stick out at the base of your back neck. This reference point is used to measure the center back length. Mark with an erasable marker. In this clip, I'm just showing you a sample of how I do my markings and how I erase them once I'm done with my measurement. Once you're done with your measurement, you could just use a white paper towel to wipe off the markings on your body. When taking your own measurements of your client, it's good advice to one, wear a fitted outfit, a fitted outfit, two, to mark some reference points to serve as a guide. It's critical to mark some reference points and others not so much as you could use your fingers to feel for them and others are just to be noted to know where they are located on the body. Thank you. 
here I'm going to here I'm going to start marking my neckline up to my neck at shoulder starting at the clavicle I marked my neckline all the way up to my neck at shoulder and I made sure that my neck at shoulder aligns with the seam line on my shirt if you don't have a shirt that aligns with your shoulder you could just continue to do your markings all the way to, up to your up to your shoulder tip the first measurement you will take is your center front full length using a masking tape tape the metal plate at the zero mark on your measuring tape and secure your measuring tape to your neck at shoulder point marking Bend from side to side to find your exact waist location. Then tie a rope around your waist. Your waist is the smallest part of your torso. Then measure from your neck at shoulder to your waist. Second measurement is the center front length. With the masking tape still on the tape measure, secure the tape measure to the clavicle point mark. Place a tape across the fullest part of the bust so that your tape measure would fall at the cave between your breasts. The cave is indicated by my finger. Make sure the adhesive tape is pulled tight across the bust. This will ensure an accurate center front measurement. Then measure from the clavicle to the waistline. Third measurement is the bust depth. Using your finger, locate your bust point on nipple. If you're measuring a client, ask them to locate their nipple with their finger as you don't want to violate the client. Then measure from the apex point to the waist. You could also get the bust depth by measuring from shoulder tip to the bust point. Yet another way to get the bust depth is to measure from neck at shoulder to bust point. I prefer the first method from bust point to waist and use the other two methods to cross check my bust depth measurement. Fourth measurement is the bust span. Measure the distance between the apex points. Again, if measuring a client, ask them to locate their apex with their finger then measure from nipple to nipple. The next measurement is the bust measurement. This is a 3 in 1 measurement. Starting with the bust circumference, measure around the fullest point of the breast. Ensure that the tape measure is parallel to the floor and it goes around the bust level on your back. Finish your measurement at the side of your bust and not the cave between your breasts as this control of your measurement. The second part of the bust measurement is the side to side measurement. Measure the front half of the bust. Measure from side seam to side seam. The side to side measurements are more accurate if you are a busty person like a D cup or a double D and on. The third and final part of the bust measurement is the back side, back side to side measurement. Measure the back half of the bust from side seam to side seam. The next measurement is the waist circumference. Oh, this is also a 3 in 1 measurement. Measure around the narrowest point of the torso. Make sure your tape measure is parallel to the floor and goes all around your waist. The second part of the waist measurement is the side to side measurement. Measure the front half of the waist from side seam to side seam. This measurement is more accurate if you're, an, if you're a person that carries more weight on your stomach like an apple shaped person.
The third and final part of the waist measurement is the back side to side measurement. Measure the back half of the waist from sides into sides and again this measurement is more accurate for an apple shaped person. The next measurement is the hip depth. With an elastic band or rope tied around the fullest part of the hip, measure vertically from the waist to the hip point. The next measurement is the hip circumference. This also is a three in one measurement. Measure around the widest point of the hip. Make sure the tape is parallel to the floor and it goes around the hip level. The second part of the hip measurement is the side to side measurement. Measure the front half of the hip from sides into sides. This measurement is more accurate for a person that carries more weight on their backside of buttocks. The third and final part of the hip measurement is the side to side measurement. Measure the back half of the hip measurement from sides into sides. Again, this measurement is more accurate for a person that carries more weight on their backside of buttocks. The next measurement is the across shoulder back. Measure from shoulder tip to shoulder tip then divide by two. Remember the shoulder tip is the tiny bone that sticks out at the end of the shoulder. The next measurement is the shoulder length. With the tape taped with the measuring tape taped to your neck at shoulder, measure from neck at shoulder point to the shoulder tip. Remember the shoulder tip is the tiny bone that sticks out at the end of the shoulder. The next measurement is the shoulder slope. Using an L square ruler, place the L square at the nape of the back neck to the shoulder tip. The nape of the back neck is the tiny bone that sticks out when you bend your neck. Mark the vertical point where the roller meets the shoulder tip with a pencil. Then measure the vertical distance between the roller and the shoulder tip. For this measurement, it's best to have someone take the measurement to get an accurate reading. As you can see, getting this measurement on my own was hard. I know from experience that my shoulder slope is one and a half inches. The next measurement is the center back fold length. Place the tape at neck at shoulder and measure from neck at shoulder over to over the back shoulder blade to the waist. The final measurement is the center back length. Place the tape at the nape of the neck and measure down to the waist. Remember the nape of the neck is the tiny bone that sticks out at the back of the neck. <laughs>